right, we're going to go ahead and get started here with kind of a, a late night edition of a Facebook Live here discussing the latest with now Hurricane Francine and what we can expect here across the region. Um, definitely have a few things that have changed. Uh, some things that actually have changed as of just here recently, and as, I mean like a couple of minutes ago. We'll discuss all of that and kind of get into the details of what, again, we can all expect here with uh, now Hurricane Francine. So like we always do, uh, we're going to start with um, the conditions outside, what we've expected tonight. Um, and we'll go ahead and kind of jump into that there. So thanks for joining. I want to say, by the way, I forgot, I think I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Kevin Gilmore. I'm one of the National Weather Service meteorologists here located in uh, Slide L. It covers National Weather Service New Orleans, Baton Rouge, all of Southeast Louisiana, and Southern Mississippi. So um, we're one of many forecasters here tonight, burning the midnight oil. Uh, we're going to be here all night, all day, 24-7, uh, and making sure that we produce and help uh, prepare, prepare everybody for uh, what we can expect with the system. So let's go ahead and switch over now to the latest. Uh, let's see, I think I have radar up. Let's see, I'll show you that first. Uh, this is a, ra a mosaic radar imagery of the Southeast uh, United States showing Louisiana there in the kind of the bottom corner. We see we got some light showers around. Really, it hasn't hasn't been too bad actually out there it's just kind of drizzly muggy um see louisiana uh, area we cover is about right here you see there's just a couple of showers around some heavier showers are trying to push up towards the coastal areas which is going to persist as we go in through the rest of tonight we'll probably see a lot more of this activity especially when you wake up to early tomorrow morning uh spreading north from uh the system that is currently into the western gulf so let's go ahead and show you the latest satellite imagery we've been discussing this a lot with infrared uh satellite from geostationary satellite showing you the cooler cloud tops which is an indicator of uh cold or excuse me indicator of thunderstorms deep thunderstorms the brighter those colors the yellows the reds the blacks those are deeper deeper bigger thunderstorms and we can see we have a good bit of thunderstorms located around the center of the storm, located somewhere about right in here. And it's going to be kind of continue up towards the northeast about in that general form. So we have some new information. I know we had the new 10 o'clock advisory just came out uh, saying, actually the 7 o'clock intermediate advisory came out calling it a hurricane. 10 o'clock came out as well. Uh, we're posting that on social media. And then now we just had information. Actually, I just have it here. I'm going to have to just read it to you. Uh, this is information that came from the National Hurricane Center saying Air Force uh, hurricane hunters have found that it's strengthened to now winds of near 85 miles per hour. So uh, pressure has come down to, um, I believe it says 970, yeah, 979 millibars. So, sh so showing some signs of strengthening actually right now. So, and that is because if we go back, we're seeing some of that deeper convection. Now, those thunderstorms is kind of locating around the eye circulation, around the center of the storm. So that's usually an indicator that the storm will tr try to strengthen, even though if you caught our broadcast earlier, we were talking about some of the uh, factors that were going against rapid intensification or rapid strengthening, which is the drier air that's trying to pull into the system. Dry air is not good for systems as far as strengthening goes. That usually slows them down or weakens them. And then the next thing is as the system progresses towards the northeast, it's going to be encountering greater wind shear. And wind shear harms tropical sto storms in a way in a way such it uh, weakens them or is, it stops them from strengthening or weakens them and you can actually see this some of these uh, upper level cloud tops are really racing off towards the northeast like that that is actually some of that shear that it'll be encountering as the system slowly progresses up to the northeast which should stop it from weak uh, strengthening and more than likely sustain its str uh, str uh, strength Category 1 is what the current forecast has, and it crosses over southeast Louisiana, the coastline. Landfall likely Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, and then steadily weakens because of the shear and the land interaction as it races off towards the northeast. Of course, we're going to break all that down here in a little bit. I just, just wanna, wanted to show you a little bit of that as far as what's going outside the window here um, with uh, outside in the Gulf of Mexico. So. Let's go ahead and jump into the latest. With the, We're going to answer all your questions too, by the way. Uh, we're going to have everything here. Let's see. Whoop, there we go. And you know I show this all the time. You know I got to show this one. I harp on this all the time. You got to know where you are on a map. Now, I'm not going to talk about it as much as I did in the earlier update, but knowing your location is extremely important because we can't sit here all night and talk about, well, what's it going to do in Folsom? What's it going to do in Gulfport? What's it, you know, I can go on and on and on. Know your parish and then determine what your threats are from these images and these maps that I'm about to show you here coming up. 
So of course, follow our neighboring uh, National Weather Service offices all across the Gulf Coast. Again, I showed this earlier. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Feel free to uh, uh, we'll be sharing this on social media, so feel free to keep an eye out for that. And then, of course, our neighboring offices. Uh, the ones are, we call them neighboring offices because they're right up against our borders. Uh, southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi, that's where we cover. We've got Lake Charles to our west, Jackson to our north, and Mobile to our east. So here's a situation overview talking about the latest with Francine. is now a hurricane, like I mentioned. At the 10 o'clock advisory is 75, but the national uh, the hurricane hunters have found now 85 mile per hour sustained winds. We will be seeing impacts from Francine beginning tomorrow. That'll include moderate to life-threatening coastal flooding, storm surge, damaging winds, heavy rain, and even a few tornadoes. Again, it's all going to begin Wednesday, so that's tomorrow. The conditions will deteriorate. As time goes on, it'll be kind of a rainy, breezy morning, and conditions will get worse as we get into the afternoon, especially as we get to the evening time. Evening and overnight is going to be the time we see the worst conditions across our area. Again, there's the 10 o'clock advisor like I just talked about. I edited it there to now say sustained winds of 85 from that new update. Uh, that'll actually be passed along with the next intermediate update, next intermediate advisory uh, coming up here uh, at 1 o'clock central time. So you'll see that be passed along on social media. Again, there's your track map. Don't focus on the center of that. We will be seeing impacts well far away as you see how far out those tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings are from that center because we're going to be seeing impacts far away from the center of that track. No changes from our earlier uh, update we did about the current tropical storm and hurricane warnings in effect. Be aware that you see the area in pink is a hurricane watch and that's overlaid on top of a tropical storm warning and that is because if the storm shifts slightly east, we may see more impacts for areas like the North Shore, Ponchatoula, we're talking about Livingston, the greater New Orleans area. We may be getting very close to hurricane conditions where we could even be seeing hurricane gust, hurricane force gust. Uh, 75 mile per hour, excuse me, 74 mile per hour winds or greater could be possible, but that if that sh track does shift a little bit more east, be on the lookout. We, we could be upgrading that, but right now it is a watch with a tropical storm warning in effect, as you see everywhere in that maroon color. That slightly brighter red color you see there, that's the hurricane warning that's in effect for Lafayette, Baton Rouge, and Homa. Conditions, again, will begin to deteriorate as we go through the day tomorrow. Wind threat, potential impact, not much has changed here. Uh, still expecting some of the bigger impacts to be across the Chafalaya Basin. I wouldn't be too hung up on exactly where you see that cutoff of colors. Uh, I would say that that red color should go in with the hurricane warning, goes all the way to Baton Rouge over towards Livingston, uh, down, uh, getting very close to Laplace and getting down to Thibodeau and including Homa and Pierre Park. So that Atchafalaya Basin, when the storm comes up that way, that inland impact of what's left of likely by that point, the inland eye wall will, be, will have sustained hurricane force winds with it. And as the storm continues up towards the northeast, will slowly weaken, but still have between 58 and 73 mile per hour winds expanding all the way to I-59, where we could be seeing some wind damage possibly in all those areas you see in orange, could be very possible at some point during the day tomorrow into the overnight hours. Again, not much change here other than the, some of these probabilities actually have come up and that's naturally what we would expect with the storm that's getting a little bit closer to the area as the probabilities to experience these winds are coming up 50, over 50% 50 as we get into Baton Rouge, definitely higher as you get into the Atchafalaya Basin where confidence is a lot greater, we'll see those higher winds. A little bit less as you head further north and further east. However, remind, as a reminder, we got a lot of folks watching us from coastal Mississippi. Um, you will be getting some pretty strong winds out there. I'll go back and show you again. 39 to 57 could be possible for you in Gulfport. Uh, and those winds will be coming right on shore. Uh, so something to kind of keep, uh, keep aware of. We won't, don't want to ignore our friends over in coastal Mississippi. And same for you over there too. Storm surge warning is in effect where we're expecting the potential for life-threatening inundation. That gets all the way into the Mississippi Sound, Lake Pontchartrain, Tidal Lakes, Moorpaw, uh, all could see some inundation from strong easterly winds funneling through the Wrigley's. Elsewhere, all the way through the coastal southeast Louisiana coast could see some storm surge inundation. And what kind of valleys are we looking at? This hasn't really changed. For our area, hasn't very much changed from, this, uh, from the earlier update we did. Still three to five feet getting into the tidal lakes, four to seven Port Fouchon to the mouth of Mississippi. And then there's that five to 10 feet Port uh, Fouchon onto the west. Could be a very significant problem there. 
So if you live along the coast and are susceptible to these types of coastal flooding issues, definitely, definitely pay attention to the latest forecast, follow official sources, a local emergency management, local parish or county officials, if there's any type of uh, you need, if there's any type of evacuation order issued, pay attention to them. And then we've been talking about how the conditions are going to be deteriorating. This is kind of a graphic showing you that. Wednesday at 8 a.m. getting to Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Really, that's what I mean by deteriorating. It's getting worse and worse as the day goes on. So Wednesday morning should be relatively quiet for the most part, other than some breezy conditions getting worse along the coast. And then the winds pick up during the day. The rain gets more intense. And we have a, a lot of dangerous weather by that point as we get towards late Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, and definitely Wednesday night. And we want to mention, too, I know um, a lot of times we get this question, and we don't talk about this as much as we should, but... When will the conditions get better? Actually, the system's going to be kind of quick hitting, uh, believe it or not. It's actually going to be pushing off towards the northeast. We could actually see most of the rain out of here by Thursday morning. Uh, there could be, with that same dry slot I was talking about before, that dry air has a tendency to wrap around that circulation and really dry out the back side of it, racing the rain up to the northeast. Uh, so that's good news in regards to the rain. However, the wind will still be elevated as we go throughout the rest of the morning. The winds will be coming in from the northeast on the back side, and flooding will still be an issue. Uh, residual flooded ro roadways, residual like, inundation could still be a problem all through Friday, even going beyond possibly into Saturday. So that water will not be as fast to rush back out as the winds and the rain will be tampering down with time. Keep that in the back of your mind. So we're not thinking all day Thursday is going to be a complete washout with hurricane conditions. The system's going to be pushing off to the northeast. We're going to get breezy conditions out of the northwest, winds out of the northwest, but we'll still have the residual flooding concerns possibly for the next several days. And a little bit of extra details there like I'm talking about. Uh, widespread heavy rainfall. We're worried about those bands. We could see these stationary, sometimes stationary, south and north bands in this type of an orientation that has very little eastward movement. And because of that, we could get training of very heavy rain. And with saturated soils already across the area, we could definitely see some widespread flash flood problems. And that's the reason for those red colors that you see there, which pretty much covers the entire area. There's, I'm not getting cued at all. If you're anywhere in our area, southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi, uh, major flooding rain potential looks uh, very, very possible with the system. And there's some of the rainfall totals. I know a lot of people want totals. Four to eight inches is still what we're kind of thinking there, but depending on those same rain bands I was talking about, up to 12 inches of rain could be possible. Uh, so definitely, due to those saturated soils, could be a very big issue. Flooding rain potential, same with the wind, is going to be getting worse as we go out throughout the day, especially by the afternoon, especially by the evening, and into the overnight hours. But as the rain pushes off, we'll see the flooding rain potential uh, back down. However, there will still be residual flooding concerns all the way through the rest of the day on Thursday and possibly even beyond. And rivers, they're going to respond to this type of rain. Now, be aware that with the forecast you see here, these are uh, flood categories best of some of our areas that uh, we forecast rivers for. Uh, only we have a couple of them minor flooding. I, I hate to say only minor flooding because I hate to say this, but depending on those bands set up, we could see forecasts go higher than this. Moderate could be possible for some. Now, that's not in the official forecast. However, um, be aware that these some of these rivers could go up higher than what we're seeing. So if you live along these rivers where you see impacts from typical flooding, minor, moderate stage, please pay attention to the latest forecast. We'll be producing those frequently uh, every day in the morning and evening, more frequently throughout, throughout the day if we're seeing any type of significant changes. And then tornado impacts. I do want to take a second to talk about this because... We're near the center and to the east of where that center of the storm tracks, we could see a few several tornadoes with this. Now, I don't want to get too much into the meteorology, but we're talking about with the increase in shear, which is better for tornadoes, we could see a little bit more activity, especially around those coastal areas. All across from Terrebonne Parish, all coastal areas, up to even coastal Mississippi could be seeing some concerns. Uh, that we may be having to issue tornado warnings. So have a reliable way to receive those warnings. And with the risk primarily being overnight, we want you to have a way to get these warnings that will wake you up so you could take action if need be. Uh, this could be definitely one of those types of situations where we're going to be putting up multiple tornado warnings across the coast. So definitely be aware of that. Bay St. Louis, Biloxi, Gulfport, Pascagoula. New Orleans, anywhere you see an orange there has the potential to see a few tornadoes, especially in the afternoon, evening, through the overnight, with the risk gone, out of here by early Thursday morning. 
and a lot of text there. I'm not going to talk about all that because that pretty much just says everything I just discussed. A lot of impacts, uh, damaging winds, life-threatening storm surge, uh, heavy rain, uh, flash flooding, a few tornadoes like I just talked about, and of course the uh, marine conditions are all going to be very dangerous uh, tomorrow through tomorrow night. Uh, so something to kind of keep in mind here. We'll kind of come back here and uh, conclude what we've been kind of discussing and kind of talk here. Um, again, uh, those isolated tornadoes is going to be something we need to kind of really focus on. Make sure you have a reliable way to receive warnings. And uh, this isn't going to be a slow system. The system's not going to stop on top of us or do any types of weird tricks or anything that's going to kind of throw us off. It's a confident forecast as far as this forward speed. It's going to hit us here Wednesday, Wednesday night, and then it'll be out of here uh, early Thursday. And then after that, yes, there could be some leftover flooding, but the high winds and the, uh, the new flash flooding, the flooding falling from rainfall, that's going to be out of here. And we'll have a little bit of a breezy, breezy conditions. And then beyond, the conditions get a lot better. After these systems push through, the weather looks a lot nicer. So uh, just one day to kind of hunker down tomorrow, definitely hunker down tomorrow night. Make sure all preparations are done tonight if you can. Um, and again, we'll see the uh, conditions deteriorate throughout the day. And we'll be able to provide you with any type of new information, but we're going to kind of keep an eye and to see how the system reacts tonight. If we see any more strengthening, and we'll be keeping a very close eye on it as it nears the coast. So everybody should be watching the forecast. If you're listening to me and live along the Gulf Coast, you need to be following the latest with the system across uh, southeast Louisiana um, as we go on through the next few days here. So hopefully that uh, answers a lot of questions. I do want to say I, I'm like I got the feed here too, so I'm I see a couple of questions. So uh, I do want to kind of hit here that tonight, uh, right now and tonight, not it's just light rain, um, no impacts, no conditions tonight. As we get into tomorrow morning, though, that's when we're going to start to see uh, little conditions get worse. So overnight tonight, we're not expecting any type of uh, widespread tornado issue. Uh, we could see some moderate rain increasing, especially along coastal southeast Louisiana, but that'll be climbing. That'll be moving more towards the north as we go through the rest of the morning. It'll become more of a steady rain, then a heavier rain, and then it'll be all over the area by the afternoon, and then the winds will respond. It'll get more gusty as we get through the afternoon. You'll notice that too. So if you have anything to do, if you have traveling to do, please be cautious. Please be careful. Uh, especially tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is if you have to do any, if you have to do any traveling, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you have to do any traveling across these coastal areas specifically, and if you're in a hurricane warning, please check the latest conditions. Please be extremely careful if you're traveling around. Uh, this is, that's why I, I like to say always hunker down. This is the, the type that you just stay in. Make sure you have a kit in case you lose power, batteries, flashlights, candles, anything like that, uh, generator. If you're going to be, if you lose power, be sure to follow proper generator safety. Do not run it indoors. Don't do anything like that. Uh, make sure it's got proper ventilation. Um, other things include, uh, make sure you have, again, a reliable way to receive warnings. Wireless emergency alerts will go to your cell phone, a weather radio. Let it wake you up. Uh, we, we don't issue these warnings to annoy you. We issue these warnings to save lives. Uh, that's, that's the mission of the protection of life and property. That's the mission of the National Weather Service. That's why we're here. And that's why we're here 24-7. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor these very carefully. Again, it's going to be tomorrow's when the conditions get a lot worse. And we'll keep you very much posted on any type of changes. So I'll go ahead and end it there. I think I pretty much hit all points there. There could be some changes by the time you wake up tomorrow. If you see the storm a little bit stronger, it's possible. Just know that the timeline is still staying the same, and we still expect impacts primarily Wednesday afternoon going through the overnight hours. So since I've said that about two dozen, three dozen times, I think I got the point across. We'll go ahead and end it there. Uh, feel free to continue to follow us on social media uh, at National Weather Service New Orleans or at NWS New Orleans. Um, and we'll be providing you with the latest forecast. Please, I didn't have the slide. I forgot to throw it here, but please follow official sources, okay? National Hurricane Center is producing these forecasts. They're doing a tremendously great job. We're, co uh, we're coordinating with them uh, through every intermediate and main advisory package. We're constantly talking to them. Everyone's talking to each other to make sure we have great coordination and a reliable forecast for you, okay? Uh, be careful about sharing bad information on social media. There's people sharing kind of some interesting things. We don't want to make we want to make sure that you're getting official information from broadcast meteorologists, the National Weather Service, and the National Hurricane Center. So, all right, well, I'll stop it there. Uh, hopefully, um, I hit all the points, and we'll catch you back next time. Uh, we'll try and do some more updates, but if not, if we're not uh, doing any more updates, 
We're still going to be active on social media, so we'll, try, we'll catch you there. And be sure to check the latest forecast at our website at weather.gov forward slash New Orleans. All right. I think that's everything. Uh, everybody, I hope you have a good night. Get some good sleep. Uh, I'll be here working, so will a lot of, a lot of us. So we'll be doing our job, and uh, we'll catch you back tomorrow. Y'all be safe and take care.